Sons of the Forest patch 7 has dropped, adding golf carts that you can actually drive and also give a bit of a push. More stone building features including shutters. New survival mechanics with water, you're now going to have to boil it or hope to catch rainwater. You'll actually see winter happen now instead of just waking up to the ground being covered in the white stuff. Brand new trophies from pretty much all the animal critters around which you can go ahead and mount. Big feature, the brand new weapon, the rifle, and of course a very spoilerific item which I'm gonna to leave towards the end of the video. But let's just say there may be another encounter that you're gonna to have to worry about now in Sons of the Forest. And as I predicted, you can now host your own dedicated server in Sons of the Forest as well. Let's go. So here we have the buggies. They seem to be on the eastern side of the map at the moment near the helicopter pads, pretty much at the end of the game. Surely there's got to be some around the golf course as well. This is where I found some guaranteed. And yeah, they're blue, the ones that you can drive. Obviously the other ones that you can't are still great and wrecked and they move pretty easily just simply using WSD on the control pad, the left stick to guide yourself left and right or holding up. You can break by pressing the space bar or the Y button on an Xbox controller or triangle button using PlayStation. And they're pretty nippy, they're pretty responsive, they feel a lot nicer to ride around than the night unicycle things. You can hold two players, a player can sit next to you, and there does seem to be a back end to it. that You might be able to drop items in, although when I tried, I wasn't very successful. It does look like it will run on batteries or some sort of charge, but I couldn't find anywhere that actually it would allow me to swap anything over. And they're powerful enough that you can actually run over at least baby mutants and kill them. I don't know about some of the bigger ones. No wonder literally every Sons of the Forest video of mine gets demonetized. Look what they make us do. Also FYI, long-standing issues with gliders and the knights actually disappearing in player saves. That should be correct now and they should be reappearing. So yep, you can now craft yourself some proper shutters for your stone windows, cutting gaps out just like you do with wood. You just need the shortest logs possible and the log that's too vertical and there you go. Kind of fills it unsatisfactorily with them big gaps, but hey ho. The price of progress, we now have proper shutters and windows. Also proper stone holders now for the proper big stones. Just simply place it down, fill it with sticks and job done. I'm going to do some more testing to see if we can maybe load up the buggy and with a bunch of rocks and cart them across the map. There are also now proper stone doorways that you can just do like you normally. And there you go, a nice brand new, more defensive door. Struts are a thing now also with your stone pillars. So you can go ahead and make big massive arches. And just like they are with the wooden ones, you simply build some across, put some corner pieces in, and then you can go ahead and remove the middle ones and have yourself a nice archway. So how about that boiling water? I think this is a good mechanic. I think it adds much needed a bit more difficulty to the game. Yes, I know there's more difficulty modes, but it kind of makes sense that you've got to boil water and now it's part of the survival mechanics. It did take a while. I left it for about five minutes and I swear it wasn't boiling. I was mucking around with food as well in the end because it just wasn't doing anything. But maybe I just didn't leave it long enough or maybe it just takes a while. And of course you can just fill up your rain catchers and drink that water directly. And of course, all the animal heads. I tried just planting one on the stick, but it looks like you actually have to use your book to place the sticks on the structure and then go ahead into your inventory and then go ahead and place it. Unless you guys can mess around a bit more of it. But I tried, there's a whole plethora of them, obviously what you might expect, and maybe some you didn't, like the squirrel's head, and you can actually even get a big old moose head. Shout out to everyone that saw me singing Bright Eyes in the live stream when we were doing this. So yep, small turtle head, large turtle head, deer, and yeah, as I said, that moose is definitely the winner. It's so just look in your furniture section. There you go, put the head trophy mount on, put a stick in it, and job done. You can then go and choose whatever you want to put on it. Lots of changes to the eastern side of the map. Also, some small ones. There are now hot springs in the mountains. It looks like these will not ice up no matter how cold it gets. This was winter across the whole map, and this was fresh water. Well, not fresh water, but water that was wet. I love these brand new bridges they've added also. I kind of hope we can build these. I know we've got our own versions, but these look more cooler. I ain't going to lie. So maybe something that gets added in the future. 
Shout out to Green Grassman and Apex Predator for also letting me know about the frogs. They are just decorative frogs that you'll find now on lily pads in some of the ponds. Can't do anything with them, can't shoot them, can't eat them, can't smoke them. And while I'm going to talk about what happens at the end of the game in a bit later, there is more additions now in the small corridor before you get to the final cutscenes. So you will have a chance to get some extra loot before your final encounters, not encounter. And yep, it seems that winter now gradually falls while you're awake and it comes across the map quite slowly, but still relatively fast. Like I thought it would be maybe a case of just snowing a little bit and then I'll go around the rest of the map and maybe the next day it'd be covered in snow. But as you can see, it's still pretty rapid. Nevertheless, a really cool feature to see it like that. And I'm pretty sure this hasn't been in any of the other updates. Maybe I just never got to winter when I was covering them, but it seems new. Little example of some of the new changes, I do believe this waterfall is particularly new, I can't remember it looking like this before, and yeah, a few other changes as well as more cannibal camps too. So of course the big stuff, yes, a brand new hunting rifle, it has an attachment equipped, obviously a sight, there is no attachments that you can put on it currently, no lights, no anything like that. Here's the location of it, it's inside this cave that previously was there, but it was shut off, it only had the ruins of a boat, where it's now been opened up and expanded a lot more. If you don't know it's to the south of the map as well, obviously where you see the cutscene with Sluggy, and get down son! So I have done a detailed guide of this cave, but pretty much stick to the right hand side, keep the right hand wall close and you will eventually get to it. You might need some breathing equipment to get through a small or shallow under cave river, but otherwise it's not like the most complex thing. Just before that section and just after you will run into some mutants, but nothing too crazy. Some babies, one fingers and obviously a few of the regular ones. And there at the end again, hugging that right hand wall, you'll come across finally the rifle. If you keep going alongside that right wall, eventually you will eventually come over to this ropeway and this will take you to the golden armor cave. This is the first interconnected cave system they've added to the game and it's kind of surprising. I wouldn't recommend going straight into that cave. I'd probably go back after having them little encounters with the mutants and picking up your rifle. Maybe trying to find more rifle ammo which now has a chance to spawn anywhere where our ammo normally does. But effectively you follow it through and you'll eventually come to a drop after defeating some more of the regular mutants before this will take you into some of the water where you find the big huge massive gold plated sections in one of the caverns. You guys will kind of know what I'm talking about if you've gone through there recently but otherwise go and check out some of the guides have already done this in the past but I would probably just get that rifle and get the hell out of there. It does look like you can get in the regular way as well but this is the water that you drop in. Yeah, the rifle's pretty powerful. It can take, obviously, a lot of the cannibals in one shot. It's pretty adept at taking care of some of the demons as well. As usual, though, that big massive scope with the tiny actual reticule. I do think they could be making it a bit bigger, but I guess it's guess realistic. I think it can hold, I do believe, four shots before you might need to actually reload. And yeah, obviously I can't see why they would add attachments. How many hunting rifles have flashlight attachments on them? Well, maybe not. Let me know. So that's all the kind of non-spoilerific stuff. Go away now. Make sure you left a like for the video. Check out the other guides I've already done. But now we're into deep spoiler territory for the end of the game. And I've got a big issue with the way End Knight are doing things. So this ending cut scene threw everyone. Crazy, bonkers, oh my god, extra dimensions. Has Timmy been cured? What's the situation? So I always thought the cube actually cured people or stopped the pathogens from making you more mutant-like, hence why Timmy seemingly seems better now. Virginia may be nearly dead, but she's okay. And obviously Silver Boy here transformed into something horrible because he wasn't in the cube. After obviously fighting a demon and having that experience, now we have this. Two helicopters. Oh, but wait. Ooh, we've got a brand new boss. And I figured this would be cool. I figured actually Timmy was going to just do the business. I was actually looking forward to him maybe just taking on the boss for once. But once again, Timmy's about as useful as a vicar in a brothel. He totally shouldn't have skipped leg day by the looks of things. And this pilot's brought about a whole new meaning to going down on your girl. The boss itself, I actually like. I like the look of it. It's clearly got the big hands and we can see Timmy there now getting back involved. But briefly, only for about two seconds before he gets put down again. And now we've got to fight the goddamn thing. 
It's massively tanky. I am obviously seeing the shock and awe of it picking up a helicopter to use as its club. So honestly, what is a few bullets gonna do to this thing? In the end, actually, not a lot. I fired a whole ton of them into it and it took a couple explosions eventually to finish the job. I don't mind a big boss, but it just feels a bit like there's no way to avoid it. There's no system where you can just outrun it unless you literally run away for miles or jump up on top of one of the cliffs nearby. It has the ability to jump massive far amounts. It spawns lots of mobs, not just babies, but a whole ton of twins, Johns as well. So yeah, you just gotta hope you've got enough health and you've got all the right armor, I'm guessing some of the new technological ones to hopefully withstand it. So it's not really a big problem. I don't mind a hard boss. I guess we'll just have to get used to it. Maybe build an outpost nearby that you've got plenty of explosives ready to go just in case before you actually go and trigger the cutscene. And I did say this in the video where I've already showcased this, but I am gonna repeat it now. Why are the end night devs adding another final boss fight before the game is actually finished? Surely this would have been better to save for the 1.0 release. There's like no incentive for older players that maybe aren't playing every update to make a big return if they've spent the last few months seeing everyone under the sun see stream this or make YouTube videos on it. It's different when a game first comes out because everyone can maybe avoid YouTube or spoilers for a couple days so they can get into their game and enjoy some of it. But from now until release, there is gonna be a lot of this being shown off and hawked around. I've already done it, as though I did try to block it out quite as much as I could on the thumbnail. For the players that don't care, that do just want to get and experience whatever's new in each update, that's also fine. But every early access game I can think of has always kept something major like this for the 1.0. So maybe they've got other plans, maybe there'll be another cutscene or maybe this boss fight might get added somewhere else, who knows. But it would have been nice to come back and do a fresh brand new complete playthrough of 1.0 knowing that I had a fresh boss encounter to take care of. Just like it was in Ark, Conan Exiles, obviously Subnautica and more. They all had content added for 1.0 that was very very much a case of endgame. We were all kind of amazed that they included the first one with the dimensions in the early access release. And I still think they should have kept that for the 1.0 at least. But yeah, it's a weird, weird call that End Night are doing with this. It might not seem that big a deal to people, fair enough, whatever the weather, it's not gonna stop me covering the game or anything like that. But yeah, it just would've been nice to have something really big for 1.0. Let's hope other stuff is coming then, and maybe this is ending up just not actually being the final, final cutscene, since they've already added another one now, and this is the second boss we fight in the succession. It looks gnarly, the lips, the hands, I am hoping we're going to see junior hands maybe appear since that's the guy that supposedly threw some of the mutants at the helicopter and made us crash in the first place. So it'd be nice to run into a couple of them soon, I'm guessing that might get added in the future too. Lots of, of course other improvements and fixes, I'll leave the link to the patch notes as always in the comment section. And look out for a guide from me talking about dedicated servers. Now they're available on rentable services. Or if you want to host your own, then I might look into that and show you guys how to do that as well. Until next time, Rat Bags, it's been a good, good update for sure. Challenging, fresh, something new. And I really like the new golf carts. I just kind of wish I hadn't spoiled this boss fight. Anyway, that's it. Me, stop whinging. I'll see you, Rat Bags, later.